Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're at the Community Matters Committee meeting for Thursday, 22nd of February. Just run through the bits and pieces before we start. So, um, fire exits first. So, fire exits are located down the main stairs of the building and by the fire exit door and the metal staircase to the outside. The fire evacuation meeting point is in the car park opposite in the folk hall. Uh, we are not expecting a fire drill this evening, so if the fire alarm does sound, please exit the building by the nearest exit and wait in the car park. A roll call will then be taken. Moving on to the filming and recording. So all town council meetings are filmed and recorded and published on the town council website. Subject to standing order 4.1.3, a person who attends a meeting is permitted to report upon the meeting whilst the meeting is open to the public. To report means to film, photograph, make an audio recording of the meeting proceedings, use other means for enabling a person not present to see or hear the meeting as it takes place, or later to report or provide an oral or written commentary about the meeting, so that reports or commentary is available as the meeting takes place or later to persons not present. Further details is given in Portishead Town Council Filming and Recording Policy, that's Policy C8, and Portishead Town Council Behavioural Policy, Section 4.1.3. A person present at the meeting may not provide an oral report or oral commentary about the meeting as it takes place without permission. All the recordings must comply and with current GDPR UK regulations. If you do not wish to be recorded or filmed during a town council meeting, please involve the chairman to this meeting um, and we will advise you where you can be seated. Is everybody okay? Excellent. Okay, on to point two of the agenda then. Um, apologies for absence. I think we are all present, no, and, present, yeah. all present and correct. And welcome, Jenny. Thank you. Um, agenda item number three, declaration of councillors' interests and requests for dispensations. So we are sure to go around. Is everybody all okay for the agenda? Uh, I have an issue with um, uh, grants application nine. Uh, with Panda, I've been supporting the Panda group for many, many years, uh, financially and personally. So I will be opting out of um, any uh, yep. petition. No worries. Recorded. Thank you, Bob. Should go. Oh, correct. Uh, none that I'm aware of. None that I'm aware of. None that I'm aware of. We've got Bob's. None that I'm aware of. None that I'm aware of. None. And I just need to um, declare a personal interest in item number 12, town floor arrangements. I'm a volunteer for Port Z in Bloom. So just in case that needed to be noted. Okay. Um, on to um, agenda item number four, the Lake Grounds Visitor Survey update. We've got a printed update um, in the pack of this one, have we? No. No, no. that's fine. Okay, so um, I'm sure with the meetings that we've had this week, um, we know where we are up to. So um, through one of our <laughs> project update meetings, David, are you up to date? I'm not up to date. No, okay, right. So um, we we were just about to start um, the process of actually the surveying with um, our councillor officers and councillors. Um, at the Lake Grounds, um, hopefully starting to take, obviously, record of all of the questions that we need to be gathering. Um, there was a couple of issues that we noted just before we launched that, um, and what we wanted to make sure that we were actually making the, um, the responses themselves accessible to everybody that wanted to. So um, the methodology of taking the responses for the survey um, will either be face-to-face -face, um, or the actual um, vision also supplies a QR code um, for the persons to take away. So if they wanted to respond to the survey, they could do so you know, after the event, as it were. Um, what we didn't have was provision for somebody that might have wanted to be able to respond to the survey 
um, that didn't have a means of activating the QR code, either through you know technology or knowledge or anything else. Um, so we've now got, um, we've worked with the company um, who's provided the survey information. We've now got an alternative method of capturing that information, um, either through a paper copy or via the telephone. Um, so we can still gather that information for those people that may want to input into the survey. So um, we've resolved that project risk, as it was noted. Still. I just wanted to be sure that the people responding to the survey for giving those QR codes and those contacts are people who were originally approached out of lay grounds. Because the whole point of the methodology was to solve all a, uh, a random yes. sample of people who are actually attending a method rather than to put out yeah. a survey to kind of widen this. Yeah, no, that's key, otherwise it's stored. Yeah. yeah, 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 and it will be promoted even further other than those that are there. So um, the, the the questions, in, in essence, in terms of the time and date and everything are recorded via the, um, obviously when you're recording manually, in that sense, um, from the QR perspective, it's the questions, um, but from the persons that are taking away either a paper copy, they've got the option to either drop it back at the phone call, um, or telephone their answers through as well. So there will be record of that. Um, how ethos are going to necessarily capture the additional information for those via the QR code. Um, it will need to be a question that we ask them. But um, in, in essence, we the, the risk was not necessarily that we would distort the survey responses. It was the fact that we needed to make the survey itself as accessible as possible for people that weren't able to stop and complete the survey at that point in time. Yeah, I mean, so, so long as it's, it's recognised, it's key people responding to other people who have been approached down there. Yeah. Take part. yeah, and we will know the method of input, whether that be yourselves taking note or the QR code. So that source information will be gathered. Um, so if we needed to, um, we, we would be able to differentiate the the sorts of the responses. I mean, if that's going to affect the um, price of the survey. No. So the price is the price is fixed, which um, was one of our other um, items that we needed to confirm. Um, so the price um, that we had off ethos, which we paid by North Somerset, included the um, the responses and the analysis and and the report from that analysis. So we've got a a total cost there that shouldn't. Um, shouldn't expand in any way. Yeah. Um, is there any other items that we need to no, cover? That's that's, that was just not really it. So, um, so on the basis that the risks identified have been resolved from the meeting that we had earlier in the week, um, we should be able to now face forward and um, and actually get the get the survey started and in the way down. So, and that would be yeah, a, a, a good. <laughs> Point to be able to kind of draw the line on not being able to to get down there. So yeah. Um. Okay. So public participation item number five. I don't think we've got anybody else mm -hmm. online, have we? So um, we've got Martin in the room. <laughs> Anything that you want to fetch up in relation to any of the points, Martin, or? Uh, I, I would like to talk about what I've done with my sculpture trail later on. Yeah. And if we've got time, do I need to report on um, NDCT? I've, I've, given a, I've given a report to Nikki, uh, and I think guys want to hear it as well. I don't think we've got it on the agenda this evening, no, no. but um, no, we can put that into the next mm -hmm. agenda. That will be fine. Yeah. And then we'll cover the sculpture trail when we get to it, if you're happy with that. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, minutes of the previous meeting that we all managed to run through. Everything looked all good from my side. Yeah, we need to do that one. Need to wait for my Yeah. Anything I else? propose the correct. Um, yeah. to pay so just. Just yeah. a question on that one. Um, obviously, it was um, uh, it was uh, partially chaired by myself, and then do we both need to 
sign it? No, it's a chair of the current meeting that needs to sign it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Happy July. I can I can second. Yeah. Yeah, I can second it. Yeah, just uh, for completeness, I guess, in terms of attending the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have it all in favour? Yeah. I mean, and yeah. Yeah. The, the bit that I was there. The Okay, just the initials at the bottom that you need. Please. And then sign the one. This is an occasion, do you see? Yeah, I'll always be that, sorry. It's still strange because it's usually in the end. Yes, we scan it. Um, okay, committee membership. Um, so we as we said earlier, we welcome Jenny into the actual um, community matters committee. Um, so agenda point seven is to approve that. The recommendation is to approve the committee membership to include Councillor Jenny Eastman. We have a yeah. We, we had as many fingers as you would like to get. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you. To propose a second. So, were you okay? Yeah, yeah. fine. And, um, all in favour? Yeah, Please. it's unanimous. We're well, sure. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're officially here now. Um, okay, on to agenda number eight the sculpture trail. So, um, Martin, you're here. We've got the. Yeah, we're going to come to you. Well, we did. I did listen to what you said last time, <laughs> about a few meetings ago, now wasn't it? Um, we we did look at, at the numbering of these of this sculpture trail, and we have changed them. Uh, I was a bit concerned about the copyright because we'd used uh, some of Persimmon's work before, um, but because we started again. Um, then we didn't need to do it. So we've numbered them now as they view from one to 13 or 14, depending on which it is. Um, so here's we'll have a look at them all. Uh, we've also changed the, uh, we've gone from, um, you can see yourself, oh, look, see what you think of the. That's clear in Yeah, Yeah, three. We've made the backgrounds a lot clearer, mm -hmm. I hope. I think they're looking quite good, isn't it? Can I give you one bit of feedback? By all means, yeah. Can we put, for stupid people like me, who didn't know that there was a map inside, open for the map? Okay. Good point. Because yeah. I, I, when I picked them up, yeah. I was looking through and I thought, oh, they might need a map. Sure, people like you on it, that we want to be on a map anymore, just please open the map inside. Yeah. Yeah, once they're all, once they're done properly and like all folded and creased yeah. and everything by a printer, yeah. it might it, yeah. You're folding them all though, so you'll know. They'll, they'll be a bit stiffer. Yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're folding them all though, you'll know that. <laughs> yeah, they will be a bit stiffer because the, the paper will be slightly uh, yeah. slightly they might, they might not. Yeah. Good point that. Thank you. Just That's good. We've put, um, put yeah, we've also put our logo on the back on the back page and the contact number on it, which I thought was a sensible thing to do. Yeah. Uh, we have set up a website, which is our probably say gov.uk forward slash culture trail. I don't think there's anything on it just yet. Um but obviously that'll um that'll take the brochure. Can you, can you all remember the brochure from what was here months before? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I've got those details. I've got them on, um, got them on the computer. And that's what will be on it uh, in some form or another. Um, so they'll be able to do that from the Q codes on here. Uh, well, I'm talking about Q codes. Uh, <laughs> I, I did research using um, Q codes outside. Uh, but to get waterproof temporary forms is quite difficult from the point of view to avoid so many of them. But, Minimum order of about three or four hundred at a time. Um, I couldn't, in all fairness, couldn't find places to stick them in some of the sculptures because of the nature of them. Um, Matthew Fedden's one at, uh, at the primary school, for example, couldn't do it. Um, 
anybody has got a on, I could have done. Um, but it, I, I spoke to two or three artists who were didn't like the idea of that at all because they thought you start sticking things on, people are going to stick flowers all over it, and we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it, assuming that didn't happen, um, then at least it they'll get damaged, don't they? And I thought there was an awful lot of uh, process going on about replacing them all the time. So I, I ditched that idea if you don't mind. Thanks for the <laughs> um, And we kept the Q code on on the leaflet itself. Is it is it worth citing the QR codes around, <clears throat> you know, near the sculptures to say the trails, just to advertise the page on the website for the trails? Well, there, there's some places I can't even do that. Um, Michael Disley's stuff, for example, is, is obviously built into the buildings. Yeah. Um, uh, one reason, a couple of reasons, so you have to a bit do this way, sticking it on their building as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wonder whether it you yeah. know dotted around the town or something like that. If on a well, I guess on our notice boards would be one thing that well, would possibly well, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Be on, we? You'd only need a small yeah, yeah, QR yeah. code for something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that as well. Yeah, okay. Um they cost about about an hour four hundred and eighty quid from three hundred. And I got about three hundred at the time because that's how they sell them. <laughs> Let me look into. Yeah, if, that's, if, yeah, if, that's well, yeah, if they can do, if we can get 50 at a time, then it's worth doing. But... Yeah, we might, yeah. Well, I, might, I might be able to know somebody by a work that might be able to. Oh, oh fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Slightly stiffer paper than this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it feels much more like a. Like a card, like a 120 GSM or. Very much the same as we did with Bosch. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly the same. Okay, let me. I, I can. I can. It just makes it feel more. Yeah, substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's more like a key point. You yeah. want to throw it out and give it to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So um, I'm due to do some guided tours on well-being walk fest on the second of March. So that's locked in. I've also applied for Bristol Walk Fest and North Somerset Walk Walk Fest. Uh, that's through May. So I'm doing two weekends from one and two weeks on a Sunday. And two days, so I got I got four walks through May. Have you uh, actually so got them yet? Sorry, I mean, you applied for them, but yeah, yeah, no, I I, I got a response from Bristol Works to say we've been accepted. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. well done. Um, I'm in the process of setting up a ticketing thing for that as well, so I'm going to have to do that. I haven't finished that yet, but I will do that. Free, sorry, free. Yeah, free. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't cost anything. Um, well, I have looked at it and thought, well, this is free because we'll have some of that one. Um, well, the other things I want to do then is I want to get up a, a presentation, I guess. I want to go to the schools, cruise ships, and, and the colleges and bring as many people in as I possibly can. So I want to go to it'd be nice to do six formers in all the, co all the schools around. Mm -hmm. I want to go to further Asian co uh, colleges in Bristol so, so I can like, pull some Bristolians in. We want their cash. <laughs> <laughs> and same with the cruise ships, really. I haven't done that yet, but that's the next level thing. The other thing I want to bring up is that I finally got a contact in, in uh, North Somerset Council for the repairs of our sculptures. His name is Kevin Carlton. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. And uh, he, uh, I finally got a response from him, and he said, Yeah, well, fine. Let me do a survey. Let me know what's required, and they got it sorted. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> this is, the light, is this the light one? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, like we sort, yeah, he said he sorted that. Okay. Um, uh, there's a couple of other sculptures need repair, mostly uh, Keen Kirby's. Um, oh, sorry, Kia Kirby's. Team. 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 Oh, Tia. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, one of one of our rats has got a broken head and there's a couple of damage on. Them. So that's that need repair. So. Uh, She's not no, I've not. I've not contacted her because of because of that. So anyway, that's that's it. I think. Thank you for your input. So um, open up for maps and Q codes for notice boards. Yeah. These are much better. Yes. Yeah. 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 This uh, this came from Open. We've got never called one. Um, the actual maps themselves came from a different source altogether, which I forget instantly now. Um, so they're much much nicer, aren't they? And we got the names of the roads on 
uh, much clearer to see than the ordinance would have been. You've got copies of issues with the night today, but no, not so. No, but we probably we we've got it underneath of what it is, and that's that's perfectly okay. So we're ready. Apart apart from um, I was mean, thinking about opening up the map. I think we're ready for print now. Fantastic. Yeah. Everybody happy with that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we're all brilliant. I think we're all good. I think we're all good. Hey, Martin. It's the foremost urban sculpture tree in the country. It is. Most, have... most diverse and, and the largest in urban sculpture tree in the country. Something that needs to be shouted about, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. This, one, yeah. this is our jewel in the crown. I, I promote it everywhere I go. <laughs> and the cruise ship idea is brilliant, actually. Well, <laughs> yeah, especially the um, jump out is me. I had leaflets that I gave out from the town. And then one of the things we wanted to do was offer them the slope train. Yeah. It, it, it's a, a neat. Time, yeah, it is. It's perfect. Journey isn't flat. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I've, got a, I've got a bit of splur if I can find it. But <laughs> you might, might want to see that I sent off to, well, um, but I didn't bring it down. Did I? Oh. Right. No, I'll try not to do that. I, I can call over and up as it is, but I don't know. No, it did. This I've sent off to um, across the walk past than the other one, which I I thought we'd like to I'll leave that elsewhere. Do you want it to read? You want to read it out? Oh, oh no! <laughs> if anybody wants to read it, you can have a look at it. Uh... Right, should we move on to grant applications agenda item nine? We've got quite a few to flurry through this evening. Um, obviously, given the time of year um, and where we are with the with the pot, um, we've had a, a flurry of applications in. So um, have we all had a chance to read and go through? Yeah. Okay. So the first one that we've got is for Great Western Air Ambulance Charity. Um, they are looking for £6,000. Um, and given their total overall sort of running costs as well, this um, six thousand um, pounds would cover just three life saving missions um, in terms of their, um, you know, their, their, their take off landing and everything else. So um, to cover three life saving mission costs in Portishead and beyond um, in twenty twenty three, the number of times the critical care crew has been called to Portishead has increased from seventeen times in twenty twenty two to 26 times in 2023, um, each mission obviously costing £2,000. Um, the grant working group uh, got together earlier this week and considered the grant application. Um, I'm just checking that we, yeah, most of us are, are, are on that anyway, aren't we? So um, the recommendation is to approve the £6,000 for Great Western Air Ambulance Charity. Has anybody got any questions or anything to bring up on this one? No. I think just the thing as we said on Monday when we met the grants working group, uh, if you actually look at what they're asking for and what they're doing, I mean, this is yeah. like seriously, this is this affects three people's lives saved. Yet there's another twenty six. Uh, yeah. Drop in the ocean. Twenty uh, four behind that. Twenty seven last year, wasn't it? Uh, so uh, I I think this is a really good value for money, and it's costing them. I think just shy of 15 million pound a year to keep the helicopter going yeah so if you look at it and they do ask for other grants from other providers they've always come to us but they're also open to us going to see them as well mm. they would like this council to go and see them on an open day but but it's a bit open day just for us as a council uh and they have also tried to get involved in our kind of penny festival as well and stuff like that so they, they do want to be involved so i know to me as i said on monday a complete neighbor you know it's a slam dunk yeah, yeah, that was my head. Yeah, I think, I think a couple of them have attended the Great Western. Yeah, I think you and Bob, Bob yeah, we've been here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing what they're doing, really. Yeah. I think when we reviewed this as part of the grant working party on uh, on Monday, John had done some 
researching for their finances. But um, you know, they're they're not wealthy. They're not wealthy as a as a as a charity. They they literally just about survive. So you know, this sort of money, although it's a drop in the ocean, what they do is not it's there, vital. It is it is fundamental yeah. to their <clears throat> their um their continuing um ability to operate. Yeah. So do we have a proposal then? Secondly, Paul mm -hmm. and all in favour? Mm -hmm. Uh unanimous. Um, thanks, Bob. Okay, so the next one that we've got is for Panda. So that's Portishead Additional Needs Disco and Activities. Um, so the request to the grants party has come in for this one for um, £5,000. Um, and this is for the general activities, monthly disco, craft evenings, skit monthly skittles, uh, one-off activity, Christmas party, ice skating, cinema trips, open air theatre, horse riding, etc. So this is in effect for their activity running. So um, it's sort of, I say non-specified, but um, that's a kind of a, a, a running example of the types of things that they do actually do. Um, now, I know a number of our councillors, obviously, Bob, but who, you attend the Panda Disco on a, <laughs> on a Christmas. We've had a couple of councillors yeah. uh, attend that. So the, as you said, the, the work that they do for the community is, you know, it's, it's varied. And obviously in terms of their numbers, we've got it here. Um, we've got this or we've got it on the- um, I think so, between 26 and 32 people. Yeah. That's it, yeah, it's 26, isn't it? Across the portfolio. And, and obviously I think with this one, if, you know, 5,000, it is is a big pot of money for them. It, <clears> it goes a long way for them delivering all these activities, um, but it doesn't cover the whole cost. Uh, it is it is a it is a grant that they come back to us for every year. Um, and uh, and yeah, as as Emma pointed out, I uh, as councillors we get invited. We're all invited. Yeah. Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I recommend that if you have the chance to go go along, it is it is a screen. Yeah, <laughs> it is a screen. They certainly do throw a very good party. Mm -hmm. And obviously, completely volunteer run. Yeah, yeah. In that sense, so. Yeah. Okay, and I, I do have a question. I just wanted to say that for consistency with the questions I've asked at other meetings, I yeah. was offline via email. Whether a the volunteers with DBS checked the number of points of residents who go and to whether the, the funds go into a charity account or a personal account, and that reassuring answers to all those questions. It did, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think it's important for us to, to know that. So I think I've suggested in the past mm -hmm. to uh, Nikki that we might alter our draft application form to include those questions as a matter of routine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It saves the time going back and forth, doesn't it? Then. Something was interesting, obviously, that was asked. I think we've gone around the safeguarding DBS checks, obviously, which they did come back and said, Yes, we have, we do do safeguarding and we are DBS dropped. I even interpreted that as we do it, but it's not documented. Now, if it's not documented, I'd strongly suggest they get it documented. Yeah. Because if they haven't got it documented and something, heaven forbid, was to go wrong and an accusation comes in or someone gets injured, they've got a problem because, well, it, it comes becomes a he said, she said scenario. Whereas if it's a, it's a written formal documented process, yeah. which is signed by someone who knows what they're talking about and knows what they're doing, and they've got delegated responsible persons and assistants, et cetera, then it means if something was to happen, happen to be, they've got some protection. Yeah. I think it's just, I think it was quite an interesting read on that part of the email. And I, I kind of just jumped out to me for obvious reasons. Yeah. So I think if we could just politely mm -hmm. suggest to them, they should get a safe running possible yeah. written by somebody. Yeah. Formalised, so we, yeah, we, yeah. we'd actually pick that up earlier. As I'm well, happy so. to point them in the direction of somebody who will write it for them. I, I'm not going to, because I'm not involved at this level, but yeah. I know somebody will write it for them if they want to, if they want to send that offer up, they haven't already got it. Yeah. No, 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 that's, that's fine. Can I just ask, where do they meet? Do they have a meeting place? 
So they meet in the Beacon Hub. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Sorry, uh, yeah uh, Beacon Hub. Yeah. Uh, if they're if they're skipping, they all meet at Skipples. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's a various, various location. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, okay. There's no more questions. Um, do we have one thing? Yeah, one thing we did yeah. say on Monday. It kind of needs to be kind of noticing. And many said it's important. We we're happy to support these kind of groups. This is what the whole grant process is about. But we're not here to be the constant life support, if you know what I mean. We expect them to start to become a bit self-sustainable and a bit more from other providers. So we're not saying no. So yeah. we're not saying, you know, if this grant gets approved or not tonight, that's what it is. We're all supportive of it. If they come back next year, we want to see some evidence. They are actually kind of where they're getting it from elsewhere as well. Yeah. And not just keep coming back to us for the same amount because there are numbers I said Monday when we all met at the grants working group to, before it comes to here. There are a number of other, other organisations last year that dropped off the radar because they decided to take a bit of a sabbatical. They wanted a rest. They're going to come back likely on this year. So if they all come back, we kind of have got a problem before the grant process even starts because the grant budget is only 35k for next year. Yeah. It's raised from this year, but it, it is only 35k. Mm. Uh, you, you do take out, you know, the potential that's the SLA, so that's the big one. So, Youth Centre, Cannes, NDCT, Christmas Lights don't sit in that master budget. Yeah. They're up, they're on separate lines within the grant process. But I just think it's important that we're here to help. We want to support them, but we also do need to see a bit of a will from the grant, whoever's applying, that they're trying to support themselves as well a little bit. And that may be they're doing it. I think, as, as we were saying Monday, <laughs> The devil's in the detail, and it seems to be sometimes that you get a grant from somebody and they've literally told you the entire war story of their group, and it's that's what we want. Yet some, we have to go back two or three times for to get information, and if they've got it and they're doing it, tell us what they're doing, tell us who they've applied for. Yeah. I think it would, just, it would just help all of us, and then particularly when it comes to full council, and when we justify it to somebody, if we get questioned, we can justify it. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, just yeah, give it a little bit of background on that. And, um, Panda, is, Panda is a group that's been around for, for many years. <clears throat> when, when the pandemic hit, they shut down. Mm -hmm. So they didn't run for about three years. Um, several of the organisers that used to run the old group have stepped aside. So they've sort of had to rebuild. Um, I'm sure they will be um, more than happy to, to have that discussion about you know, what they can do to, to generate some of their own fundraising. They, they, there's a membership fee that they they charge the um, the members, but then you know they should be looking at sort of other things as well. Yeah, and, they, and they have that. In, yeah. yeah, they do notice that um, they their users do pay um, for the monthly discos and certain other activities as well. Um, so they they do know that, but you said it's the wider, and it's not necessarily just Panda. It's for all of the. Drugs. I think it's in, in general. It's, it's in general, isn't it? There's... We want to help. We want to support, but we do only have a cash pot that can go so yeah. far. Yeah. Uh, and I think you know, as I pointed out to a group on Tuesday night, have you applied to this, this, and this? And they're all all three of them are in Porter's head with grant funds, and they looked at me as if like, what? We didn't have a clue. So I pointed them in the directions. So, and then some of them are quite easy to get hold of because they want to give to the community. And, and groups like Panda, in my opinion, are an absolutely fantastic group. Yeah. And there's absolutely no reason why at least two of them wouldn't say yes to one yeah. grant. Yeah. And their grants range from small <clears throat> to kind of medium sized, just into double figures. So, you know, there's options out there. And I'm, I'm happy to put them in the direction and help. But I've got no issue with that at all. But I think we want to support them. But, you know, yeah. it's. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll just build on Ben's comments really. I possibly on the grant webpage, we might say, um, particularly on the short of cash next year, quite is give some sense of where priorities would be given. Yeah. And yeah. those priorities yeah. might be people applying for sort of start up funds, you know, yeah. just to get the show on the road, you know, a bit like Panda post pandemic, a bit like the chess club we saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so where there is evidence and then apply for the other sorts of funding that Ben's alluded to. So so yeah, just to get that evidence because yeah. we're gonna have to make different trips as well. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Oh, absolutely. If they don't if they've applied and they don't get it, well that's 
that's not a problem. That doesn't mean they're not going to get any from us. It just means they're showing willing. We had, I'm not going to name who they are. We had one that come, came to us 2022 for a sizable grant. Uh, they're not based in Porter's Head, but and that's not through choice uh, as such, but they service probably 95% plus of their people are Porter's Head residents because there is no facility in Porter's Head for them to go and do what they're doing. So we awarded them the grant. But they also proved that the vast for X, Y, and Z. And one of the one of the people actually actually asked for was a, a massive organisation in, in this country, which reaps in millions and millions of pounds a year, uh, and it's a monster organisation. So and they wouldn't give them any money. I mean, uh, and if you actually know who they are, if you go back into the history channels, you'll find out very quickly who they are. And we were kind of we all sat there thinking, hold on a minute, if you're doing this for all the kids, and this organisation which does this won't give you any money. No, they said they haven't got any. Well, my response was, yeah, they shouldn't stop giving money to other countries to put their sports on in the World Cup, then should they? Was a comment. <laughs> uh so you know, we're here to we're here to help. So you know, and I think just to David's point, sorry, just to David's point, we're all going to get the copy of the grant process, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be issued to us by Nikki next week. Yeah. For us to feedback any comments on any wording that we'd like or think we should be changed or tightened up on, yeah, or I think we can that, hand, hand. So we ask for that on Monday. So that is going out to all. Said. Yeah, just to make said, yeah. this this process, just as you're aware, David, particularly and, and Jenny as well, we completely rewrote this process in 2019, effectively. The, the original council process and grant part or fund or whatever you want to call it was not fit for purpose, it's probably the best way of describing it. So I sat down with Nikki, uh, Martin, the ex-town clerk, and Sarah Jackson, ex-officer, in the Pochex, where I want my meetings, the best place. Uh, and we completely rewrote the entire quest. We actually took the other one away, just literally filed it in the appropriate bin and, and moved forward with it. Uh, so it's a completely rewritten process, but it did adapt, and it, it changed in 2020 again slightly to tighten it up. We found sort of a few bits that needed yeah. to be tweaked. Uh, and again, we're open to adjustments, it's not a problem, it's just making sure it's easier and trying to get information. And one of the key points was originally, you actually have to print off the Word document, now you can fill it on the website. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, we've, we've adapted, so yeah, yeah. Any, any feedback is really helpful. Yeah, it's about keeping it agile, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. Janet, we'll come yeah. to you and then we'll... Just, just very quickly, um, maybe we could add a line there, what other grants would you apply for? Yeah. Yeah, because so, the other thing is that we tweak them into thinking about it from the start. Yeah, definitely. Just going to wrap up. Right, let's move on to a vote then before Bob thinks we've forgotten about it. Um, so do we have a proposer? Thank that you. Was <laughs> and a seconder. Yeah. So um, anybody else that, yeah, so we've yeah. got, yeah. Okay, and all in favour? Yeah. Marty, would you, oh, thanks, David. <laughs> Oh, you might have gone home, you never know. All right, <laughs> Can we just clarify this bit when the council's having to leave? I don't believe they do anymore because we wrote them to the standing order that they don't need to leave. They just don't talk about it and don't vote on it. If it's a humor on this. I don't think we, I think we wrote it in. We just double check. Yeah. The, what, the, we, we did it very deliberately because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and this issue about being in the room, we ask, it just comes up time and again. So you've got on. NHS and health services to call them. Personally, I'm probably not easy with persons outside the room to stop the debate yeah. unless they would ask for specific questions before they head off. Um, just, I think if the person sitting there, they've got less interest in you, I'm worried about upsetting them. I don't know, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky one. But... We'll follow it up. Okay. Well, um, just, yeah. just double check if we can. I'm not sure if I'm right in what I'm thinking, but if I'm not, then that's fine. Uh, okay, next one that we've got is um, Vision North Somerset. We'll get on to the next page. I think I might have got two. Um, I've got, you know, I've got two Great Western Air. It's me. Yes, I have Okay, so I couldn't really yeah, do this one from memory, but we've got the summary there anyway, haven't we? Um, okay, so the Vision North Somerset. Um, 
This is a, a charity group that's got 126 service users in Portishead. Um, they are um, they've applied for a thousand pounds from the grant pot. Um, they've currently got three volunteers. So seeing friends is a monthly hub. Um, it's a monthly hub meeting reducing social isolation. Um, and they also give advice and information on specialist equipment and accessible technology training. Um, and they have a monthly social lunch. Um, so as I said, they've got 126 service users in Portishead and that number has been growing um, mm -hmm. as well. So um, yeah, from what we went through earlier in the week, um, our I don't know if we've got any other questions on it, but our recommendation um, from the grant working party was to um, approve the approve the grant for a thousand pounds. I think mean, the, the comment that came up from Monday was it's, it's a thousand pounds. They've got 126 users in Port yeah. mm -hmm. Do the math. Then it's like, is this it? It's kind of thing as we kind of said. It, it was a unanimous decision between Emma, unfortunately, it wasn't Emma because she got stuck on work uh, being a police officer. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a new job she's got next week. Uh, but me, Paul, and John unanimously agreed that this goes through because all goes through to Community Matters Committee to be. Well, because it would be approved because it's thousand pounds per hundred and twenty six people, and we think it's a very good value for money. Yeah. And it's exactly what the grant process is about again. It's benefiting the people of Baltus yeah. that need it. So I know, I'm happy to propose it. Yeah. Any more comments, but yeah. got can, can I just check with us on that that it goes to a charity account? Yeah, yeah. 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 There's There's quite a quite a yeah. 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 <laughs> In fact, North Somerset comes to our partnership meetings as well. Yeah. So yeah, there's this, uh, as I said, it kind of like cascades down, doesn't it, through all of the, the well-being um, and, and the signposting and, and, and everything. So uh, so we have a proposal. Yeah, just a quick question. You've just said something which I forgot about. I should have said it Monday, really. This, in theory, should come out of the cost of living fund, not the standard fund, because it's it's a cost of living thing is it helping people, which is what the whole thing's about. No, I didn't. It's helping I, people in isolation. I, I disagree. The cost of living fund was set up as an emergency fund to help yeah. people with the cost of living sudden increase as we came out. Yeah, but this pandemic. is more just general, this, generic, yeah, generic, isn't it? Not all 126 of these service users were there prior to the pandemic, but a lot of them were. And they will be yeah. come out of the just the a, just a pressure the yeah. climate, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think from what we've I think it was a grant for me, yeah. it sits much yeah, better in the right. right for the cold call or something. Yeah. So we have we chosen yeah, yeah, yeah Ben mm -hmm. with David mm -hmm. and all in favour? Obviously mm -hmm. unanimous as well. Okay. Just maybe one point getting back to this kind of thing, it's about applying for the role. I suppose the other consideration that we should bear in mind is that some grant bodies like to kind of give top up funding. Yeah, so so yeah. if you've got funds, you know, what's it, 10,000, might make it easier to get funds from elsewhere or yeah. vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we could say, you know, give us some money conditional money elsewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've seen that condition applied, haven't we, in, in SFD? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's still a we we'll still do, yeah. yeah. So the next one is, um, and a couple of things have kind of rattled around um, following the discussion on the, at the Grants Working Party on this one for St Peter's Hospice. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to what we were saying a couple of applications ago with, with with Panda to a certain degree, and, and that's actually whether, given that we are now really low in terms of what funding that we've got left, whether mm -hmm. you know wh whether it's feasible to actually look at this in the sense of is is St Peter's Hospice as a as a charitable organisation themselves actually at the moment very very reliant on having this two thousand pounds from us given what we've got left in the pot and any more priorities that we've got between now and um now, yeah now and when we've got the refresh so if i i'll start with 
Ben and then Paul and then Janet in order, or Bob, I don't know which way, which way this came. Yeah, okay. So I've got a couple of things to say. What One thing about the meeting Monday, but I'm also going to say, be into this meeting, comments from John David, who's also part of the Grant Working yes. Party, yeah. which I've got the email to read out. So it, was a, it wasn't a unanimous decision on Monday. It was a two to one. Paul and I voted for. It was close. John voted against. Yeah. Uh, and this is why John voted against. Obviously, so bearing in mind John's background, apart from being a finance wizard, uh, obviously he works with with the finances with Western Hospice yeah. uh, for 13 years as a trustee. So he he effectively said, obviously, his reasons for not wanting to go ahead with the grant are as follows. St. Peter's Hospice has an annual income of £18 million pounds per annum. It made a small loss in the year ending March 2023. It is not in financial trouble. Point two, it is a total reserve of £37 million, pounds, of which £11 million pounds are described as free reserves. They are well off. Point three, our £2,000 uh, will be small, will make a minimal difference to the obviously St Peter's Hospice activities. Uh, next point, obviously I know that many Paul's residents obviously have benefited from St Peter's Hospice services, although uh, most of their obviously, care is directed towards obviously the wider Bristol area. But we have very limited funds. I believe we should be focusing our relatively small grants on organisations where we can see the grants make a difference, where we can see a direct benefit to our community. I think that's the really important bit, our yeah. community as yeah. such. Mm -hmm. Last point is I don't object to adding uh, to aiding organisations outside our area, but we should focus on our town. Uh, and note also that Western Hospice had no financial support from NSC or Western Town Council during uh, John's time there. And obviously, St Peter's Hospice are a much bigger organisation than PTC. If anything, they should be supporting us as such, you know. But his his point is the fact that ultimately, eighty million pounds per annum they're getting in grants and donations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They've got thirty seven million pounds in the bank and eleven million pounds <laughs> for free reserves. It kind of John said this Monday. Obviously, he's an extremely analytical individual and kind of always brings the back to the table uh, as such. And it's like, I've thought about it since, and I'm kind of, I'm of the opinion that we should approve the grant because I kind of, with John on this, it, it, what what difference is it generally going to make? And, and I've got a massive amount of empathy that people have to use some beach sauce piss or all these organisations for end of life care or support through long illnesses, et cetera, et cetera. I've had family members go through it, unfortunately. It isn't a pleasant experience, and they do a wonderful, wonderful job. But I go back to the point that John's saying, and what is genuinely what will this grant do? It's context, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. If it was, if it was state state to buy like two years ago, it was to buy something specific. Mm -hmm. We we provided they asked for one machine, we agreed to give them money for two machines. Uh, but again, we didn't have John on board. We didn't have the devils in the detail. Now we've got this. I think it's important that we listen to it. Yeah, so definitely. So I, yeah. I, I, I have to admit, as much as I have to say it, I think you did a wonderful job. I've actually changed my mind since Monday, and I will yeah. go the other way. Um, That's my opinion. If we we'll go in order from our hands earlier, was it yourself? Well, I don't I, But Ben's last comment there was pretty much exactly what I said. I, Ben and I, in the Grant Working Party on Monday, put this forward um uh, having listened to to john's comments i've done a bit more digging as well i've read what john put forward uh <clears throat> i've changed my view as well that yeah. can be my comment mm -hmm. Bob? uh okay just to give you some idea um i'm not a fan of uh, St. Peter's hospice because it is not based in what is there it's bristol and uh, so just to give you an idea, in 2022, um, they achieved record sales in their shops of eight million five, uh, well, eight and a half million compared to 7.5 million previous year, with a net sale of return of nearly three million pounds. Um, now, as a as a councillor, I've gone to these places for support for putting up a poster or putting out a tin for um the scouts and, and and the youth club and i've been turned away even just putting the poster on the window and for me for a 
charitable group that we all, including like the Club Scouts and probably the youth club, take clothes, toys, bric a brac down to these uh, uh, down to these shops for them to make profit on. Um, obviously the costs of cleaning and things like that, but for them to even refuse to put a poster on a door or or or, or a, a, a tin for the, the Port Zed Cub Scouts is to me is not on. And that's just my personal opinion, but looking at their records of, of profits that they've made, and it's even bigger, and it will probably be bigger in 2024. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the for the two thousand pound, yeah, it's con it's context, isn't it? Yeah. And it's it's priorities and and actually what difference it is going to make versus another application because we've still got applications yeah. in the backlog and we know that our applications exceed our grant. We've got two more so, sat there. Yeah, we've got two. I'm not trying to say that and, you know that a, a terrible charitable organisation. That you know they're really really good. Yeah, but. <sighs> It's more. It, yeah, no, you would think they would work work more with the people that are. Yeah, no, yeah. And helping find in that tangible mm, benefit. Yeah. You know, if if it was if it that two thousand pound would go into the air ambulance, it's tangible. It's of it's a it's a mission. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's but yeah, and and yeah, it's a real eye opener for me. We come to very quickly. Just almost as many people use Western Hospice in this area as use um, some Peter sources, but we don't give them money. Either. I think we should go back to John. Well, we've never had any money from yeah. NSC or West or Western Town Council. So, and I, I'll kind of echo your points. We had a bit of an issue with the Christmas market because we were known that for store outside of their shop. Well, and talk and, and anyway. This, and this is a little bit frustrating, but we have it across some of the shops in general, but it's like, hold on a minute. If, where, what planet you've been living on for this past whatever mm -hmm. you know what's happening and I think and there's, there's a number of shops unfortunately and some of them is because they're so just to be clear some of them can't put pots in collection pots or signs or they're not allowed to do it's part of their uh, business says they can't do it Greg's for example can't do it we've asked them absolutely no problem at all they're very supportive brilliant but they, that's their policy not a problem but I think if, if they can if they can do it a group can do it whether it's St Peter's or whoever then what is the problem? It's a post at the end of the day. Yeah. As an example, forget the collection. I mean, I've been, so I've, I've done the summer event posters um, and I've been turned away by them, you know, and mm. it's not, it's a page for it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's not a lot of yeah, it. I think that collectively, unless David, you've got anything to add, I, I think we're going to overturn our recommendation and, um, and yeah, unfortunately, sorry, Jenny. I was going to agree with. What the consensus in the room is thinking about how many people um actually leave money in their wills to St Peter's Hospice, mm -hmm. and at funerals very often mm -hmm. the donations mm -hmm. yeah. to them, and you look at the difference that money that was given to Panda, they're not going to get the money probably. They, there are alternative places, but the impact of it and the vision or sunset, I really yeah. that makes such a difference yeah. to people. Yeah. Um, they might have all the money in the world, but actually they can't see, they can't read, they can't read their mail, they can't, you know, so yeah. that's really important. Yeah. So we need a proposal or something. Yeah. We vote against it. Yeah. There you go. And all in favour of that reversal of recommendation? Yeah, unanimous. So we just kind of explain our reasons why when we go back yeah. to them and say why, and I'll send this email that John sent us to Nikki and you. I think it's important that, it you know, we're, we're not saying no because we're being tight or obnoxious. We're saying no because we genuinely believe this is mm -hmm. going to have no value to their organisation. Mm -hmm. So, the, look to do support. Them. I was just going to say, just to let you know, there are 50 shops in the Bristol area. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, they have got there. It's a network. It's a massive network. Okay, uh, that concludes agenda point nine point one. So um, we're now up to the citizen advice North Somerset, so 9.2. Um, so we've got the quarterly report. No, if anybody, yeah, has anybody had time to go through anything of note that anybody wants to bring up? I think mainly for my, my comment will be the fact that obviously 
the service they are providing to ports that is 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 kind of unrivaled and untouchable from what they offer. I, I uh, and that. their feedback, I think they should be commended on their feedback. Yeah. But since we were originally elected in 2019, their words, not ours, but not exactly what they said, but they didn't really have a relationship with the council. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel supported. Yeah, yeah. Their comments are they feel supported, they feel backed up, they feel helped. And if there's an issue, they can come to us. We may not always give them anything, but we'll give them support and direction where we can. I think that's important to know. I, I think they're doing a wonderful job personally. And you know, we're in a in a time that's troubling for a variety of reasons. Uh this is their last quarterly report per se for this year. Yeah. The next yes. one will yeah. be to deliver to a, a to full council mm. uh before their SLA can be issued. Yeah. Uh which they have done in depth. I mean, there, there was the exactly we we'll do a presentation, yeah, Richard and uh, yeah, the, the those, stats yeah. are on there, and there's yeah. over this mm -hmm. in this report here. We've got over 300 contact individual contact yeah. split down by ward. Um, so I mean, their stats are really it's just astronomical. Yeah. And then, and, and the sad thing is, and I know you know, you go back to the past year when I talked about cans, kind of kind of what did we wax lyrical about them as such, but unfortunately, what they predicted has happened. Uh, and they predicted the can of worms would open middle of the end of last year mm -hmm. and keep yeah. going yeah. and not close for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've been, sadly, but they've been proven right. But I think also we have to know that it just shows how incompetent central government is of actually trying to realise there's a massive problem in this country, mm -hmm. uh, of actually trying to help groups like this when they kind of cut off key funding or when they cut off funding, say, to North Somerset or other local authorities for bus services and so on and so on. Mm. It, it just shows how much the people that actually should be making decisions are out of touch with reality. Yeah. And whereas cans are, are, are on the ball, and if they weren't on the ball, I tell you what, Portsmouth residents and residents across North mm. Somerset as a whole in the country would be a lot worse off without people can, like cans. Quite lit. You can quite literally see the spike when the cost yeah. live in. It's when. It's just when. Do, do you lie time on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, um, yeah, 50% more between July and September. And then it's thirty percent more October and November, so it just kept going up. Jen, um, one of the things we asked Candice to do was to give us a quarterly report each time yeah. for the money. But we kept their promises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it, you, you, that is something that we should be very grateful for because they really value what we what we give them. The other thing is obviously that. Every Friday, or almost every Friday, I'm there at the same time as Council Day. I go and speak to them and they keep me abreast of what's actually going on. Um, mm -hmm. um, there and CANS, there are three of them. There's um, the paid worker, a volunteer as well, and Claire, and they are almost entirely working non stop. Mm -hmm. and, um, all three of them separately. And that um, when Sue started, she was there as, uh, on her own, but she now has Liz, who's a volunteer and who takes her own clients. And it's necessary, it's essential. Yeah, people come in um, in tears and they go out and they see them. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's said it's just through right. answers that they need to be able to know that there is something else that they can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Oh, to say something. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I think we just need to make sure that we do get Richard in for the next one to give the, the, the full review on yeah. the year. It's it's yeah. really it's yeah. really informative, um hugely beneficial to to councillors who may not have um heard it before. Heard it before, yeah, or seen them or um, and, and then really just to support what Janet said as well, it, it's such a positive working relationship we have with them. You know, we, we yes, there's a grant, yes, they use it, yes, they give us a huge amount of feedback and detail on what they spend it on, specifically on Portishead. Again, it's tangible, you can see the benefit. But then when they come <laughs> on the door for cost of living, which we knew they were going to do, which is part of the reason why. Yeah. You know, they they put the flag up, like you said, Ben, and, and they they judged it almost to the month when we were going to see it. Yeah, that's good. But they, you know, they still contact us and they say, 
hang on a minute, we've got this one resident that's coming mm -hmm. and what they're what we're looking to help them with doesn't quite fit in with what we ask for this cost of living pot of money for. So are you okay if we do, you know, yeah. they are they are so so transparent, transparent with, with how they yeah. want to spend the money that that they you know are so appreciative that we that we give them. So residents that are coming in that have questions that need signposting it's it, it yeah most most of them so actually have got to the stage where they come in they're coming in almost despair yeah. and they are we witnessed, um, we witnessed the, the, the change in people when they walk in when they walk in and we ought to provide each of those ladies with a box of tissues actually because you probably only will need them for the long time um, okay, so we've got the point where we've got Richard coming for the yes, old town plan submitting yep. in May. Okay. Um, May is doing it, is he? Is that wise? Reason being, May's meetings are normally absolutely crazy with stuff that's got to be done. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Can we just have, can, you have, can we ask, ask the question? No. That's a really stupid question. How desperate are they for the money? As such, because this is a part of it, this is a five year SLA grant, just to be clear. To yes. So, yeah, but my point is if we if we get them in in March, can they prepare themselves? We're only giving them two weeks. I don't think that's particularly fair on them because of what they've got to put together is a bit unfair. What meeting in there are you thinking of? Were they thinking of attending? Which will be the council yeah. annual meeting? Why, do you yeah, that, that's, that's, why could they not come in and present at community like this? Yeah, they could do. Normally, it's for council it's because for council of, that approves the it's, the, it's the grants, it's, it's, the, it's the SLA to save the £10,000. So they can come to community matters, but they still have to go to full council mm -hmm. to be voted on. We can't, we have got haven't got the delegate authority of this committee. We've only got up to £10,000. That's why it has to go to full council. And there is absolutely no way actually, around it. Well, there is a way around it, but it's very messy because it means you have to split the grant into three pieces because mm. they're trying to free up some uh probably the time in the in the council the council meeting mm -hmm. well let's let's see if he has got availability yeah. i mean it looks like their data from a data perspective they're already recording it so it might not necessarily be something it's that they they're available isn't it is there availability yeah, isn't it so let's, let's what see what's the meeting 13th of march 13th. so it's oh, good so i can come um, okay, let's yeah, move on to you, right? number 10. Yep. Um, and this is the Hinkley C planning consultation. Um, so we, we had this through via PAG, via our planning application group committee. Um, and in essence, it was a notification for planning um, changes um, that they are making down there. Um, so it's, I'll, I'll read this out so we've got it here and then I just run through the detail so um the consultation which they are running is a proposed application for a material change to Hinkley point c nuclear generating station um and then there's an order which is 2013 section 153 of the planning act regulation 10 um which is infrastructure planning and that's changes to revoc revocation of or development consent orders and then regulations 20011 um, the information sheet that we've got here um, sort of summarises what exactly that they're asking for um, consultation on. Um, and it is, um, it's three things in summary. Um, they are making a temporary substation a permanent feature. Um, they are building an additional four new structures regarding sluice gates and lifting beams. 
Um, and then all in, I'll kind of summarize all of this in, in, in one sort of um, basket. And this is changes to um, what they're doing around the fishery. Um, so there's works to three weirs to improve successful migration and easement of passage for migratory fish. Um, and they're also creating or enhancing new salt marsh areas, associated habitats, um, seagrass bed, kelp forest, and um, oyster beds. So it looks like their plan, in essence, which they submitted a very originally, however many years ago, has been updated. So, yeah, I think when, when this came to pack, we all kind of looked at each other and say, well, no, okay, it's, it's a new power station. <laughs> what the heck? So we, we we kind of we talked about it. We kind of I know I've looked at it. I think what they're actually trying to do is put, forget take the substation out yeah. and, and the sluice gate bit. I think the bit the important bit is the salt marshes yeah. and the water. I my interpretation of this is although it's not been said, they're trying to make sure that there's a set, clear separation between the potentially polluted water yeah. and the other water. So they're they're trying to make sure that there is no cross contamination and where the fish are going from A to B. They're not getting contaminated and then dragging it into the natural course. It's, I may be completely wrong, but that's the way I've interpreted it. Yeah. Uh, so I think I, I think what they're trying to do is, is very much the right thing. Uh, and ultimately, all they're asking us to do is, is to consult on it and feedback our comments. Yes. I think ultimately, we can't stop this train moving because yeah, it is, it is what it is. And to keep I, us all going. I think the consultation ends in January next year when the yeah. um, one of the government. Um, let me see if I can find it. They're where... two years behind, aren't they, at the moment, anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, all of the comments must be received no later than the 29th of February, so a week from now. Um, there is... The, the consultation is is online. Um, it can be provided... and your so, um, Comments can be provided anon anonymously. Um, and yeah, the it was the Secretary for State for Energy, which I think um it, in essence makes the overall decision eventually. But in, in essence, from our perspective, it's if we've got any comments that we want to make um as a council, but also you can make comments to the consultation as an individual as well. Are we gonna publish the consultation? I think, I think it's on our website. Yeah. It is on our website already. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so just um just in case. So um our recommendation, I do do we need to vote on the recommendation for this as well? Um, why do we to because it's only it's to submit any comments, yeah. isn't it? If um if anybody wishes to do well, you want to make a formal comment by the town council, if so, that will need a vote and give me some words to submit. Yeah. I, I don't know if any of us are educated enough in, in the, the whole thing of new yeah. power station to kind of comment. I think I, I think from my comment, where I've interpreted it, sorry, David, is, is I think the way I've interpreted it is they're trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, this is this is an evolving thing as it goes through the two years behind. This machine needs to keep going. And I think they're trying to do the right thing. And they're being open with it. They've been very committed with this council and other councils across the area they come to us when we've asked them for help they've given us help uh and i, I you know i think that as an organization it's it's a beast of a, of a heart you know the higley point is not just national grid it's, it's all the other companies that sat behind them and a lot of them you know i think i say balfour bt etc have been really accommodating important and helpful to some local groups uh i think it's just we should commend them for that the first yeah. point, I think it's just the right thing. I don't, as a council, I don't think we need I to make any formal comment. But I, I think the eyes of the, the, the public across the country will be on Hinkley, and um, not alone the governments to make sure that it, it runs smoothly. Yeah. I think the only thing we could do um, is ask Avery Wildlife Trust if there's a document. Well, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I, I, yeah. I would imagine that it's got expertise to come to this. Avery Wildlife Trust may not, but it's our local group. We subscribe to them. Yeah, we could just forward a quick email to them. Mm -hmm. Have this deadline for coming twenty ninth. Yeah, 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 good plan. That's my only thought. But yeah, it's obviously pretty set I've got no idea what the no. FD system is. So. No, 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 way, way over. Yeah. Oh, I do. Indeed. Okay. Spots what I've said over pack to here. Do we need to? Yeah. Thank you. No. Okay. No, that's fine. So that's not needed to be voted on. So we can move on to um item number eleven. 
So it's the draft North Somerset Mental Health and Wellbeing Strategy 2024 to 2029 consultation. So this strategy is highlighting the importance of mental health and increasing need for support. It includes an action plan setting out how North Somerset Council will work with partners to address the increasing need for mental health support and tackle health inequalities. So the three themes that it's focusing on is prevention, early intervention and support and living well. So prevention is the preventing mental ill health before it arises, preventing any worsening of mental health problems as early as possible. The early intervention, identifying mental health, mental ill health as early as possible and intervening early with the right support and supported and living well, supporting individuals in a holistic way so people with mental health, mental ill health can live well in North Somerset. So um, the strategy um, in its sort of complete sense is, is online on the North Somerset, um, North Somerset government website itself. Um, the consultation is actually open for a little bit longer, so that one's open until the Thursday, 28th of March. Um, so from our um, prospect, in, in that sense, um, we all submit a report, but it's going to be a lot more than what we're going to be putting together word-wise here. So um, I think mm -hmm. the plan is, in essence, to kind of take this away through all of the relevant areas mm -hmm. that we want to um, hold all of that together in um, in consultation with the officers as well, and then we can submit mm -hmm. um, a, a response. Is everybody all right? I think, I think probably Laura is the best one. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, would you like to meet with Laura and, and me on it? And when we've got a moment? Yeah, we'll, we'll meet and have a discussion. There's, there's a couple of things that I have. I, I'm, I'm, I'm frankly panicking looking at that because yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's what we're trying to do in a small way for people in Port of Safe and what we're trying to do. We just need much more money. Yeah. So we can do more things. Yeah, I think it, it definitely needs to be a, a, a piece of work that we, mm -hmm. given, given our experience, given what we've gone through, given where we are, given what reach that we know that we do have with collectives that we've got and well-being, um, you know, all of that should be really rich information for them to take into this strategy. And, and yeah, I'm just panicking. Where do we start? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just going to want to read this through. I just downloaded it. And I can send it to you guys comments at a mm -hmm. strategic level about detail. Would you like to join um, us? Because the problem I'm fine just to send you some. Yeah, I know, because of the strategy. Um, oh. But I suppose the issue is that avoiding duplication, making sure that you know, we don't duplicate here with some set of Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but if it's helpful for you to come along, I will, but otherwise, I'll just send you some little things. I think the duplication issue is, is something that I will probably take issue with because the thing is, more sunsets approach might reach some people, ours might reach others. And you can't, any one approach, you're never going to reach everybody. Um, it's yeah. more sort of thinking is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That, but that's always more the problem than the link while we're now, yeah. Yes. yeah. But you it's see, the, 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 the thing is that so we've got one thing that more Somerset are trying to do, which is a signposter issue, where we people can ring up and get signposted to different organisations. And three people are employed full time with that. And the month before last, they only had something like four inquiries in the entire month. But it's exactly the same job as Claire's today. But Claire's got 10 people or 17 people every week asking her as a part time person doing that. And it's not working very well in the Somerset because it's so remote. I think what they might have to do is to rethink it and actually put people in communities to, to talk to people. Like what we're doing. So like like what? Yeah, right, okay, fair enough. So yes. Officers who've, who've worked well locally and who think you know, provide that added to them. They can do it there. They've got a, a, a they've got a working example here, mm -hmm. and do you know what I mean. This isn't this isn't something that you. It, it's not by the sky. It, it is a working example. 
Yeah, and got... I think probably, uh, from what Wendy said, it's probably the only people in the country who have got something like that. Yeah, yeah, very similar, given the analysis that you've done around, you know, comparable mm. sort of, you know, setups and, and, and what people have focused on. Yeah. I think th this kind of mm. sucks to me as reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Completely, and right, totally. as a, the, the polite way of putting it is, you've got to get boots on the ground, and get in people's faces to know you're there. It's no point sitting behind the desk if that's what they're doing. Well, and I'm not saying they are, but if that's what all they're doing, then well, how do people know about it? Because we we know North Somerset aren't great to communication. It's not their forte, but at the same time, they've invested huge amounts of money into well-being offices. We've got one of them. We are the most successful one in North Somerset. Probably in the country. Well. Possibly, I don't, but I know in North Somerset, Cleveton haven't got one anymore. No, uh, it's just um, um, advertised for somebody. Yeah, they're going again at it. Yeah. But ultimately, ours is working extremely well. So why, why aren't they engaging with the people that have got the boots on the ground instead of reinventing the wheel and throwing more money, which apparently, quote unquote, they haven't got, to reinvent the wheel? Why I mean, Why don't they just invest in, in these offices that put into communities um, a permanent investment and then sp spread it across the whole of North Somerset better and let it work that way. The people on the ground do it. And the reason Claire's so successful is because she's got boots on the ground every week. She's built relationships. She's there. She's a trusted advisor. She is a trusted That's advisor. That's what it's about. And it's word of mouth. Yeah, and he's sitting on the end of a phone for a call yeah. tent, was he going? It's completely yes, pointless. Yes. This, this, this is why I think, given given the experience that we have got, if we feed that into an actual documented report, We've got mm. our figures. We know how many people that we've been able to. Well, Laura's got all the figures, hasn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's and, you know it, it's it, it's rich information that they they should be they should be using. So we no, actually it's, it's low cost. I mean, Claire does not cost a lot of money. It's low cost. I mean, the, the number of people are going to have working on that probably a whole department of, of fifteen or sixteen people, whereas. We've got one person who costs eight thousand a year, or possibly I don't know how much he costs, but approximately that, and he's actually doing the job now. Mm. Right. So are we okay? I mean, do we need to propose or recommend that now? We'll okay. we'll get together and sort that out. How long do we need? To, oh, March twenty. Well, we're going to do it very weeks. soon because we're going yeah. away on holiday in about three months. Well, uh, we'll sit down. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Can just say that. I'd you be very I'd be very ha happy to help out because um, early intervention and prevention um, in North Somerset <laughs> at a, for a district level, I don't think has been really high on the agenda for a long time. The money, yeah. um, certainly if you look at social care and the adult yeah. and children, um, and then you look at, um, say, an authority like Wiltshire that has done absolutely superbly both mm -hmm in adults and children, and they took a very brave step, probably about seven years ago, to skew their funding into early support and early intervention and mental health wellbeing, and it has really paid off. And I wonder how much of what North Somerset is now trying to do actually has been driven by some of that. Yeah, there um, is a link I've there as well. Really, really yeah, happy to. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. I, I agree. I think Wiltshire are just streets ahead. Yeah, they? Absolutely they are. streets ahead. And, mm -hmm. and um, my concern with this is that we can potentially put a significant amount of time and effort in that will, once it lands with North Somerset and they realise the cost of doing this properly, that because they just haven't got funds, they will. Mm -hmm. They will just. Yeah, but. You know, they could, they could, oh, let's talk I, about yeah, this. Yeah, 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 I can talk about this. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but can I can I ask one question? I know you all know. With um, Laura, somebody mentioned that Laura's funding comes from North and Is it secure or not? September. Okay. September. Okay. And you know about this? Yes. 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 You are coming. I am coming. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we were okay with that. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. fine. Okay. No need to vote on that. We'll just make sure that that's what we we do. Uh, so moving on to item number twelve, town floral arrangements. Um, has everybody seen a report on yeah. this one? Yeah. 
Okay, so um, really, I guess what we're looking at here is um, so we've got the the period for 24-25, so it will be this budgetary period, um, and we've got the total costs which were for the last budgetary period. Um, so the budget line that we had in there, um, which was agreed in the in the town council meeting in January, is seventeen five zero six. Um, we've got the estimated costs um, for the projected costs, and um, for this year now being seventeen seven one eight, so uh, two hundred eighteen sixty five um, over. And that is just noted without any additional water or contingency in terms of what we what we've got there. So we've got a, a price increase um, in essence from the horticultural contractor, um, but it, it's there or thereabouts with what we'd what we'd agreed in the budget line. Does anybody have? <laughs> yeah. I think my first comment is going to be a positive one. They do a fantastic job of this town, and they're all volunteers, and it does look absolutely wonderful throughout the year. There's a book to this, I and it's a very big book for me. I it was a book. Uh, I think it's a huge amount of money, and I'd love to know where, where else to get other funding from. I would love to know. And I have been asking this. I know I spoke to Wendy about it. She knows my concerns on this one. I'm not against supporting them. That's not, sort of not what I'm saying. But people, we, we as a council keep comparing, say, to the Christmas lights, a few councillors have made a comment, well, we give the Christmas light this. But we give the Christmas lights an OK, and I've made slightly biased. I've got a bit of interest. I sit on the committee and run the events. But at the same time, this council's given them £12,500 last year. It costs circa twenty five k to run the lights. They raise all the other money themselves. To me, this feels like if we stop the funding tomorrow, this would stop. Genuinely, it would stop. Now, I think that'd be terribly sad, but at the same time, we've already said it tonight regarding other grant providers, etc. They've got to start standing on their own two feet. They can't keep coming to this council, in my opinion, thinking we're the cash cow. I, I'm not being rude about it. That's just my gut feeling and my opinion. Because if, we, if we're going to be consistent as a council, so we can't get criticism too much, we're all going to get criticised no matter what. If we're going to be consistent and say to someone like Panda, we'd like to see evidence of where you're trying to stand on your own two feet next year, or we're saying to the Christmas lights, we'd like to see evidence of that, or we're saying to Fred Bloggs' bandwagon, we'd like to see you doing that. We have to say it to these. We have to be consistent on our message. But it's... What, one not. question, which you might... Is, this a re, is there a reason why this is a budget line and not a grant? It's always been that. Yeah, it's, it's... We can't find the history on it. Mm. We've, I, I've been asking behind the scenes, yeah. for, and Wendy's been looking for months on it, we looked, well, I think it was just before COVID or just after COVID, I asked a question because the, the watering and the guy that does the watering is is a brilliant guy. He's the only one that does it. Yeah. He's the only one prepared to do it. We tried to get other people to tender, weren't interested. It's a huge amount of money. I think 11K, is it, thereabouts for water for the season? Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. And that, that's bearing in mind we have an average summer when it's like it was in 2022, when it it took to 42 degrees, yeah. it was out two or three times a day yeah. at six o'clock in the morning. There's no one else that does it. Is the, is the aspect of the volunteers actually doing it? It's of no, they, there's no financial benefit or community benefit to themselves doing it. They're just doing it. But I guess the volunteer aspect is the fact that they are planting everything that the council is purchasing. So it's probably different to... I don't agree. So, so, so who puts the Christmas lights up? But the money that the council provides money for, who puts the lights up? Volunteers. No, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just sorry. It's a question. Yeah, I know. I'm just throwing it back because I think yeah. my, your point's a valid point, but I think it's a mute point because other organisations are doing it as well. And it, I think it's a really tricky one. I'm not against giving them money. I'm not against supporting them. It's the last thing I am. What I'm saying is, is if we're going to be consistent, we have to start yeah. asking the questions, mm -hmm. and we can't keep being the cash cow because it's going up. This in a roundabout way, this one is. To approve payment of £2,105.50 plus VAT, 
for the winter 23-24, increasing the budget of 18 at, from 17506 to 18500 for the 23-24. But obviously then there is also to, to, to continue the winter, which will be a reduction of 298550. So it's kind of it's it's not going up much. Yeah. But that's not my point. My point is is where else are you getting more money from? David Janet. Oh, well, um, uh, as Ben says, obviously we were hitting 40 degrees last year. We actually had a dry year last year, and that was a concern with what was in bloom. Um, I'm just thinking, um, is it worth us sending an invitation out to uh, Port Zone Bloom and asking if they would like to do a presentation in the q &A? I think it, it would be helpful. I think they kind of think this comes to the one. They'd be glad to. So then, then uh, let's, let's give them an invite to uh, the next group of members. David. I, I was just going to say, um, the, the town's uh, floor arrangements seem fantastic and they're quite appreciated. It's kind of like a year round, Christmas lights, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, and when I saw the cost, the thing, and we thought about this for the first time, that comparison that you just mentioned, it seemed reasonable in relation to the Christmas lights and how much we give them, you know, because it's 12 months a year. It does seem really core, a bit like the Christmas lights, it's a core town council function to me, mm -hmm. to keep the town looking yeah. nice and to yeah, yeah, well being. Yeah, yeah. um, and for that, that amount, it's a huge amount, really. I guess the challenge with, so there's the point Ben makes about um, fund themselves. I guess the charge you might end up with, so, so we need to be fair across the, mm. the different yeah. groups, don't we? Charge you might end up with is all our local groups that provide nice streets decoration and make place nice competing with each other. To, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. But then we do need to be fair across those two groups somehow. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the total amount of money, it doesn't feel. Like yeah. Number one. If you want to know the history of it, ask John because he was the uh, the um, finance person who was for Pontesley Bloom okay. when he applied for a grant originally to Portsmouth you know, Town Council. He was the one that did that for about eleven thousand pounds at the time, I think. That was about ten years ago, fifteen years ago, and um, they saved us doing the job. Yeah, that's, that's that was my point really. It's like yeah. we're purchasing the flowers, but we've got. As I think uh, in myself, it's like yeah. just having to pay to I'm not giving yeah. that back. I'm not, I'm, you may be missing my point, or I've not made it very well. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is they do it with volunteers. So if we don't give them money, it doesn't happen. This town looks mm -hmm. crap. Simples. If we don't give the Christmas lights the money, the winter, the Christmas season, this town looks crap. Yeah. Simples. Yeah. If we don't, is if, that balance? Yeah. If you go and pay, if you go and pay another contractor, this is probably going to cost you. Forty thousand pounds, fifty thousand pounds a year. Mm. Now, related to Christmas lights, you go and pay another contractor to do what the Christmas lights do. I'll tell you now, they'll never do the display that we do. That's not being arrogant. Never in a million years will you see a display in this town like the lights do. Yeah. One second, just one second. Se <laughs> secondly, is there's been a lot of noise about the Christmas lights from a number of people, not in this room necessarily, but a number of people that I've seen in different messages or whatever. There's noise about the Christmas lights should be more self-sustaining and actually why don't they do this and why don't they do that? We can't do much more than what we do. Right. But if you can take it away, then where's it going? It'll be my doing now. I'll just try to make a point. I think what we're doing is, is the Christmas lights plus quarter set in bloom mean that our town is exceptional, both with Christmas lights and quarter set in bloom. It's costing us 30 grand a year. That is nothing compared to everything else we put our money out from. And I think that we don't we don't stop we we don't ask them to be self-sustaining. I'll tell you what, I've worked my socks off in Portis Head in Bloom when the gardens were open. And our garden, the one I was working in and doing teas and coffees, for two full days on my feet, we made a thousand pounds on teas and coffees in that one garden and I've never worked so hard in my life. You ca they cannot get enough um, gardens to do it, gardens to do it. I don't think we're going to be doing it this year. And 
people are getting older and no extra gardens are coming into it. And it's, well, they are actually, but they can't do more. We've got to give them that money. I'm not, I'm not saying we're not giving it, Janet, but that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is we've got to be consistent. Yeah. And, it, and it is some people, you know who they are, you all know who they are. You've seen the correspondence in communications. If you can start beating the Christmas lights on the head with a stick and saying be self-sufficient, and you've got to be consistent. And, and I'm going to defend them. a Christmas banner. No, but we don't beat them in the head. Well, yeah, but not the law, though. We just say yes, because it's 30,000. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving my view yes. on what I think. And I'm not saying we don't support them. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. We just need to be consistent about how we do it, yeah. is what I'm saying. I, I, I think next year, mm -hmm. similarly to the lights, the lights bring in a lot of visitors from outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The floor displays mm -hmm. the same. The fact that every year, you know, what was it in blue, it wins awards, that brings people in. Countrywide. Yeah, for the summer. They bring value to the town. Yes, it costs us money. But they're already doing fundraising with the open gardens, as Janet was saying. Yeah. They already do a lot. Should we get them in here and, and, and have them explain that to us? That's what I'm asking. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think Ben, you will be surprised as to what they already do. Uh, there's one individual in this town that, if you knew what I was saying now, she's my mother in law, I'd be getting beat around the head with a stick because she helps them. She does the bit at the Esplanade Road. I'm not saying I don't support them. That's the last thing I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is we need to be consistent, and and I, I can't, I can genuinely, I think they have presented in the past four years. I hand on my heart, I can't tell you when. There is, there is, there just doesn't feel from them a willingness to come and communicate with us. And the criticism but, um, we did get was because we haven't set well, them up as a, they're not applying for a grant in in the same sense. And that's what myself and Wendy just said. Perhaps across the course of this year. We do advise them that it will be an SLA. It needs to go to a, 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 All the bigger ones have to do SLA. Yeah, and exactly. any 10,000 pound plus should be an SLA. Level playing field. Yeah. And then yeah. anything that we are doing in this manner. But obviously, we've agreed the budget for this year. This is a budget line yeah. in this year's budget. So yeah. therefore, we draw a line over where we've got now. And then next year, um, for 25 26 budget, we readdress how we're going to approach it. I think that. Can I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Can I just say this very quickly? I think that, that the Christmas lights and the floral displays are a completely different issue from all the other grants. I believe that they are enhancing our lives. Um, everybody's lives in Porter's Head is a massive massively big enhancement of our lives if we cannot just say okay we're not talking about 30 people or or the chess group we're talking about 27,000 people here yeah, yeah. we're going to do and if we can't just say okay we'll bite the bullet and accept that we have to pay out 30 grand to make this town as beautiful as it is all the year round I think we're going to be doing the wrong thing. And we can't just say, well, Ray, it, it'll sound so picky and so mean to say to these hardworking people, you've got to raise your own money now. Yeah, I, I don't think it's about that. It's not what we're saying. It's not what we're saying. I don't think we can ask them to do that. They're working for us. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not about reducing or not a reduction or removing it's about just making sure level that playing field. It's level so it's we, we've got the service level agreements in the same way that we've got with the lights and with any of the others that we do a lot we, we can't then say you can look elsewhere for other lots. i don't no 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 it's it, it's it's yeah. just about okay the, fine the, i've the, probably yeah. got completely the wrong end of the stick yeah. no 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 I, I, I don't think so. We just, yeah, it's not about reduction or removal. It's just about making sure that we are analyzing that. Yeah, really yeah and we're getting the information. So, so can let's use cancer the example. They come to us, they've got an SLA. Yeah, that's true. £27,000, 70 pence this year. But they tell us where they're getting all the funds from. And now, we're not going to say no. What I'm saying is, is, is it's, I think it's communication. Exactly. All, all we see from the bloom is, well, this is what the money is, but we, there is no communication. Whereas you get communication from cans, you get communication from the lights, well, you get we, communication from the centre, you do. But hang on, I'm not saying you don't. 
Can we just make this clear, right? I have just I have asked for a presentation and a QA for Port Zone in Blue. We've just mentioned about the CAB and how wonderful it is for them to come down here and give us a presentation and we all understand what they're doing, how they're doing. What they've what they've achieved. Mm. It should be the same for Port Zone, uh, uh, Port Zone Bloom, Christmas lights. So should we say there should be at least once a year they should come down, give us an update, give us an understanding of what they're doing. That's all I would yeah. like them to do. Yeah. That's it. It's at the minute we give them instead of them requesting, we yeah. you know, it's it's a line and it's it's just at the moment it's that direction, not not a request to actually provide the flowers. So, or, or you know, all of the other bits and pieces that go with it. Paul, did what am I saying? Did you have anything else to add? So every to every, every, every year, year, every <laughs> year, Paul's and in Bloom, Paul said St. Councillors are invited to go on to the judging day. I did it last year. Yeah, yeah. you did it. Eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and and <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that, but they they invite us all. We don't go every year. No. Right? We don't go every year, but they still invite us. And if you go along to it, they sing our praise. Mm -hmm. So the judges, they say, oh, yeah, you know, we do this because of the financial support that we get from Paul Z Town Council, because of the volunteers. They sing, and they present, they have all the information to, to bring along and tell us what yeah, they and do. And, that, and I'm sure if they do that, then we all understand. And we've got uh, enough cabinet down there. Whenever they get a new cup, they put it in a glass cabinet. Yeah. It's, it's, they're, and they were so grateful when we gave them the space to have our most our wonderful thing in the in the glass cabinet. Yeah, right. It's part of the fabric of Port Said, isn't yeah. it? In, in essence, right, David, and then we'll move on. Yeah, please. Thanks. <laughs> I, I think we'll say the same thing, aren't we? Yeah. Same for yeah. Both yes. scripts are great. I, I, I think they are. I think the lights and which is a bit of a slightly different from cans. That are kind of no, but what I'm saying is, 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 is fans come here, they, they give us a, a yeah. good detail and an understanding, and it is it, 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 <laughs> 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 Sorry, David. I, I think I think the one thing is we have about contracting is it, it kind of feels a bit mechanical, and I think it's important to. You know, th these are large, these are all volunteers who give hundreds and hundreds of hours, yeah. like the Christmas lights, but it's important to make mm -hmm. sure the contracting process is a kind of mechanical process and make yeah. it seem like we might be contracting dependent to, you know, different, I think. Yeah, no, when when you just said, we'll, we'll formalise the process, we'll make sure we've got a level playing field across it, yeah. and we might not be ready this year because of the budgetary process, but certainly for 25, 26, then we'll make sure we're all... Can we sign this off? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I so. Yeah. So, um, are we do we need a proposer There's, and a seconder, or do there we a just... couple of recommendations though? Because if you read it, it's going to go over the budget, and there is a yeah. an alternate suggestion in there. So that's what we need to have a look at. Um, that's it. Yeah, she'll be yeah. Flowers, yeah. So we need need to approve the winter invoice for 2024 at 2,985 pounds. Yes. Yes. Um, and then if we agree the budget for next year is going to go over the budget that we've got in our budget, if that makes sense. Well, I interpret it's not because if you look at it, so we've got the agreed that the winter 22 24 at X amount of money. Sorry, my thing yeah. just crashed. Yeah, 29. But then, 000, uh, sorry, not 2,985. Yeah. 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 But then, if you then look at the next two points, is yes, it's going to go from 17 to 18. But if you then look at the point three of 2,985, is it? I'm trying to remember from memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2,985. It's actually bringing us in effectively just around about the same. We still want to vote on it. I'm not saying we haven't. But effectively, the actual cost is inflate the increase is negligible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Tonight, I'm going to go to uh, an occlusion lesson. So. An occlusion? Occlusion, <laughs> yeah. I don't even say right. it. See, mints, Janet. See, mints. I need another one. Okay, I've got one. I've got one in my mouth already. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> in sense of the recommendation, then, do we have a proposer? Is everybody clear on the 
for no yeah. eviction. I'll just vote yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, I might, with my personal interest, am I able to propose? Or yes, you can. Yeah. If I propose, and um, yeah, Paul was next with a lovely little index figure there. And are we all in favour? Yep. Yep. Well, I'm going to have me. Okay, <laughs> right, gosh. Much like my mother in law, now. she is me to go into hiding for a few weeks. <laughs> um, okay, item agenda, uh, item 13. <laughs> was that both for both of those right? It was for both of those recommendations yeah. to approve the payments and then the increase in or the potential increase in the budget for this year. But hopefully, it is just sort of it should be. inflationary. Um, in um, okay, so I'll, I'll rattle through the climate actions update that we've got from um, from Lynn. So um, it has been agreed that we're running two climate projects under the real projects under the project management plan. Um, the previous events um, of the clothes swap um, and the Porter Z sewing bee have now been morphed into the sustainability day. And obviously the sustainability day has grown to include um, sort of, you know, various different um, crafters and businesses from the Portishead area as well. So um, on the, it, I'll, I'll just sort of run through because I mean, uh, we were there earlier in the morning um, helping them set up, but there was such a collective there. Um, and obviously as a as a group of individuals, we're, we're, we're looking to actually push that forward as a collective as well. So um, on the sustainability day itself, there was the clothes and toy swap. Um, there was Portishead Sewing Bee. Um, they were obviously there doing sort of fixes and repairs and, and all the other bits as well. There was handmade jewellery. Um, North Somerset Council were there we got, um, with waste and recycling advice as well. Um, zero plastic deodorant and candle retailer. Um, recycled jewellery. Um, there was fair, There was a store from Fair Trade. Um, new furniture, um, organic wheat bags, sea glass jewellery, holistic therapies, litter picking to the tide were there um, as well. We have posset filters, Avon Wildlife Trust were in attendance as well, um, and the Centre for Sustainable Energy was there as well. So, um, foot four, there was around 80 to 100 people. Um, and the clothes and toy swap had approximately 200 kilograms of items donated, half of which which was swapped back. So then in terms of our carbon calculation, that's 1300 kilograms of greenhouse gases, which were saved um, with nothing being sent to landfill. So, um, oh, what's the recommendation on that? So, yeah, so it's still kind of, yeah. So has anybody got any... Any comment to that? I mean, it was, yeah, we would. Well, I, well I, attended by 10 councillors, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 it was a good day. And as I said, as a collective of people, um, you know, and, and trying to push this sort of, you know, the, the community side of that forward as well. Um, it's definitely something that, you know, throughout the year we can mm -hmm. continue to, to build upon um, and, you know, added all of those additional functions in that we, we saw on the day that were discussed as well, like recycling and, um, and, and some other bits and pieces as well. well uh, I was just saying, I think the only bit that I was concerned with is the plight of the, the poacher itself. Yeah, we that, we, that we, is, we did discuss looking at a um another another venue as well, just because of the size. I mean, we were squeezing in yeah. you know um the vendors that we had there on the day. So um I mean to support the poacher, I, I think they've done amazing for the town. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, but I think that event has outgrown yeah. that um that location. Yeah, I think some of the feedback that I got when speaking to the officer about it was that when they arrived at the poacher, it was chaotic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't clean, it wasn't prepared ready. So I know it, it didn't I know... take us too long to get it into mm. into organization, but yeah, I mean the 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 space, the the, the space and the tables and everything were just not, yeah, not it wasn't big enough for um for, for the actual vendors <laughs> yeah. themselves. And then obviously you you know, we needed to maintain flow for people coming in around and, and whatever, but to, to actually manage to get 100 people there throughout the day is, you know, still a testament to, you know, yep. what we did and, and getting, you know, getting the message out, but definitely to be able to increase it, we, it's, it's a, 
it will need to be a different venue um, next time for sure. Um, yep. Okay. Um, item number 14, the uh, project management plan trial update. Um, so I know obviously we've had a number of discussions about the project management plan, but um, obviously what we've seen the benefits in terms of the late ground survey and some of the other projects that we've got coming I mean, through here and the type of things that we are now, you know, being able to collate as standardized questions and standardized things and the grant update, uh, you know, the updates that we're doing on the grant application. Again, that's, you know, wash ups and just making sure that we're taking um, the lessons learned back into things. So we, we're not, you know, revisiting all of these things that might drop through a gap. Um, we're making sure that from a you know a diversity and inclusion point of view, we've got everything covered that we need to to make sure that what we are doing as a council is you know, is as accessible as as possible as well. So um, a number of the documents we've got various different iterations of documents, and um, we we're, we're honing it really, I guess. So um, yeah, I don't know if everybody's managed to read the read the plan um, or read the report. Um, but we're still, I guess, in that phase where we're kind of honing things back to be specific to what it is that we're doing rather than having a, you know, a whole plethora of, of things going on. There we go. Yeah, agenda, I should go by without saying something, as you know, um, but I'd really, I'd like to thank the officer for leading this, because it's much more detailed and helpful, I think, than the, the reports we've seen before. I, I can follow where the hours are being spent. Um, and, and, and so it's really interesting. And, and I suppose the thing I noted there was the 35 hours of officer time have been spent on you know, a kind of a period of three weeks. Now, I, I take the message that that's going to go down as we get more experience in doing it. But I think it's really helpful for us to be recording that. So at the end of the six month trial, I guess we're going to sense time taken to do so this. I think we're now much closer. To, to do it. So thanks for that. Yeah. No, no, thank, thank you. you. As I said, we we are getting there and we'll continue to hone it. And um given what we've done, we've had a number of meetings now where we've used the format um where you know we've got all of the information accessible and ready for councillors that are attending the meetings. Um and I think overall the you know it's it starting to come to fruition, but we'll yeah we'll we'll continue to whittle the process to make sure it's as agile as possible. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so the wellbeing coordinator update. Um, we've got the report attached here. And I've managed to get everything completely out of order. So there we there we go. Okay. So um, point to note, obviously, um, before we go into this, is the wellbeing spring into wellbeing event that we've got coming up. So Saturday, the second of March, in the Beacon Hub, Somerset Hall, the Folk Hall, and the Library. Um, and and who's coming to that? An absolute full plethora of uh, of everything going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, be there, well, Janet, be there. Anytime. I'm not sure whether I'm around that day. Yeah. That's why I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, so a lot of work has obviously gone into the planning. Um, we've got the Lions Club as well. Um, we've got all of the other bits and pieces that are going on. So um, so yeah, a huge a huge amount of event. So forty six, going up to forty six exhibitors now from the forty that we had there as well. So um, yeah, just point to note on that. Um, has anybody got any questions on the report? It's, it's obviously a, a lighter. Succinct weed. Um, yeah. yeah. The jog has been cut out, and it's the devil's in the detail, which we're getting every month now, which is really yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. And Jenny, this will be the first time that you've probably seen this in this much detail. So mm. if you've got any questions or whatever, just do shout. Um, and obviously, oh. just a, a, a point in terms of our, as a as a council, we've held our first. Um, plan session for the diversity and inclusion um, sort of walkthroughs and everything that we had mm -hmm. yesterday, which was well attended as well. And we'll continue to have, um, have you know, various different elements of that. But uh, 
a thanks um, to the two groups. So we had um, North Somerset, LGBT Plus, and Sari um, with us last night. Yeah. Um, and then we've got other disability um, sort of uh, charities coming in mm -hmm. into the future as well. Cool. Uh, just on the spring of the well-being, yep. um, just a, a note, we had Adrian at the Northwestern Coffee Morning on Wednesday morning, which uh, we weren't expecting it to be very well attended because of our horrendous weather. Um, we almost ran out of space. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a huge amount of interest in the spring of the well-being event. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were, um, they were uh, yeah. Basically, bugging him the whole time we were there. Who's Adrian? He's from Lions. Lions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once the uh, yeah, yeah, everything. Oh, uh, he was he was there trying to sort of book people up for the for the um, the tests. I don't think he got a, a huge number of people to book, but lots of people said words out. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be well attended, I'm sure. Oh, gosh. I'm, this is the third one, isn't it, for me? Yeah. 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 The first one we started with Abby in the Dorset and, and the uh, giving away all those prizes. Yeah. Um, okay, agenda item number 16, Wind and Way Toilets. Um, it's sad news again, really, I guess, for us, isn't it? So... Um, at the previous meeting, it was noted that a temporary change to the closing time um, was being made. So we we're pulling that forward from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and that was owing to and to reduce antisocial behaviour that had been noted there. Um, unfortunately, in the middle of half term, um, the toilets were again vandalised. So that was on Tuesday the 13th. So um, the decision was taken to close the toilets for the remainder of half term um, on the grounds of the cleaning personnel safety and the risk to further damage the toilet. So this has now cost us another, uh, the most recent damage is another £500 um, to repair. Um, the disabled access toilet had been significantly damaged um, as a result of the, um, as a result of it. So... I didn't see whose hands went up first. I think I, I think we need to get a report from Mike, because because Mike kind of is the officer kind of in control of these as such. I'd like to see a report on what we've what money's been taken for the toilet for the past sure. let's call it five years. Let's go back to 2019. See how much money's been taken mm -hmm. for the yeah. toilets and also see how much money's been spent on preparing the vandalism. Because as it a guess. Vandalism stuff will far outweigh what we're taking. And we're not here to make money on them. That's not what we're here to do. But my point is, this is wasting a huge amount of taxpayers' money because some mindless idiots yeah. are, are quite happy to vandalise something that isn't even theirs, quite frankly. It's the rest of the towns. I, I would, my my personal preference would be that the toilets stay shut indefinitely. We put the report together. It comes to full council. We make a decision then whether we reopen them or genuinely and i'm serious we knock them down because it, it is it's absolutely deplorable the behavior is disgusting and it's all right people on social media are saying because i'm not on it but i've seen some of the messages have been sent them oh it's not that much is it hold on a minute you may when the preset goes up you may when this goes up you may when that's not done yet you say no it's not a big lot of money it is a lot of money when it's 500 pound on top of the thousand pound on top of 200 pound on top of 300 pound and so on and so on it's it's the thing and my other point around this is, where are you just police in this town? The, the sat up at the top of that hill, less than half a mile away from here, drinking coffee and having microwave meals or whatever they're having. Where are they? On a serious point, then, where are they doing their job? Seriously, where are they? We're not getting them. You've got. We know the drugs are being dealt in there. We know the drugs are being dealt behind it, which is why we shut them and restrict to the opening times. Why is it not being dealt with? Why are we not getting feedback? We've got feedback from Alan on it, and he's pulling his hair out, bless him. He's trying to get help, and it's like head, wall, butt. But it's, it's so frustrating. Considering we have two security cameras less than 100 yards away. Um, is it my turn, Bob? <clears throat> okay, I did, I did a little bit of research and I've contacted the company. I'm just wondering if whether the council would consider uh, an option, which is to implement card entry. So, in other words, people will have to use a debit card or, or a 
we did or a credit that. card. Yeah. Um, the company's called Danfo, but to give you an idea, um, Devon, Cornwall, and Wales have implemented this in their areas. Uh, South Ayrshire, Lake District, 4BA, uh, spending 1.7 of the um, district council's money on 16 of these card entry um, toilets. So they're actually rebuilding them. Um, I'm more than happy to keep in contact with Danfo and find out actually how much it would cost for us to get a card entry system. I just think it's a good idea because obviously it's a deterrent for the youth because if they put the card in, that identifies them. Um, we also need to remember that we will have one bank left in the town very, very soon. And the future, everyone will use cards. So card is king in the future, as we know. So at some point, if we do decide to keep the toilets, which obviously is an essential part of community, um, it's a thing that we need to think of that at one point we're going to have to turn them into card entry points anyway. Just just a, just a thought, that's all. Okay, you can come to Janet. Um, I rang the police because I hadn't got very far and I put a, a message in for actually not when we meet him. They need a sergeant there. And he said he hadn't been told about it. And he couldn't believe it and he had to find me about it. Nobody had told him about it. Any of it, the drugs, the lot. He was absolutely still on a one hundred one hundred one hundred one something that hadn't been. They got stuffed and said they probably didn't think it was worth letting him know. The point is, it's the police's job to do their job. Yeah. They're employed to be the police, and when there's drug dealing going on, you've got them in the anchor there. <laughs> it's. Please, he called know. I mean, we've got Emma and Alan that went up Monday to see an individual who we've got on CCTV camera that maybe being that individual. The police have been called twice, but I don't think they've come out yet. Have they? Well, I'm apart from today. PC, PC yes. Emma. But... I did have a call today. Well, okay, so we're now 72 hours what later. They, they asked me if I was still on site. <laughs> <laughs> what? How many days was that? Three. Three days, thanks to Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, Sorry, I, 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 I did forget to mention um, <laughs> the average price is now 30p entry on most toilets. So we are underpriced <laughs> than most towns and cities, and the card entry points are between 50 and a pound to enter. <laughs> and nobody can expect the... to the public, the public are well aware of the damage to the toilets. And it's another thing we need to think of. Would they support a 50p entry point? Yeah, to protect, to protect yeah. the vision. David? Yeah, no, I mean, it's really frustrating to yeah. the town the door and do the vandalism. But I like, could be really important to get the uh, uh, costs um, of you know, how much money do we get? How often do they use? Like, I seem to remember when we were doing the budget. So they are they are used, but obviously we don't know what that those twenty entries are used for. So we're not we're not gonna know. Well, I think I think last year's thinking about four hundred and ninety pounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not talking number one, number two. But we also include the costing, the cost of getting the toilets cleaned. You know, how many hours a week? Do you have to pay the cleaners to go in there? And we've got, yeah, we've got that. But could we, when investigating bots and um, card readers, just find out from the remote operator and how often they, how vandal proof they are? Yeah, I'm not worried. I've spent a lot of money. Yeah, and it's still not going to get rid of the actual problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can. There's um. I think yeah. it was, I think Mike said around about £490 up last year, but I know one of the bills last year was over £1,000. Mm -hmm. And it's not, we're not there to make profit on them, we're not allowed to, as a council. we're not wanting to, but it's, it's trying to paint the picture. The thing is, yeah. if you've got a really, if you've got a nice provision mm -hmm. and it is clean, and you know, there's a more of a guarantee of it being clean and safe. Then you actually might get more people using it. So what our historic information might not be relevant with yep. what it might look like going forward. Sorry, sorry, Ben. Did you say a full part figure for what we 
I think the last big I might say was four hundred ninety six pounds. What to repair? No, the big, the big, the big, main, we took on the take. Got an estimated. Yeah, we we've already this one looked yeah, into it. So no, um, what? No, over the period of no, the day, no, we haven't. No, we haven't. Um, did it finish? You had any points that I could. The alternative that some town councils have done is um, to pay Cleveland Cross or some money to local supermarkets to make the toilets available to the public. Yeah, that's right. Um, so so we could you know got supermarkets nearby, we've got plenty of coffee shops in the high street. And if the town council was offered to give them a certain amount of money and were to flag where those places were available, yeah. that might be to it. Yeah. So I, I just think we need to think about all the different options. Yeah. We need to think about cars, we need to think about the alternatives. I think also some of these calls comes back to the police doing their job. If they, if the police are called and you've got drugs sat in front of you, so the value of around two hundred pounds was it ish from memory? Did you I see mean, it? No, but we know we did. Uh, and it's like, really? What what more do you have to do? I don't, a bit like Emma and Alan on Monday, what more do you have to do to get a phone call today? Take your car and actually give them a lift. I mean, so, no, they're doing a great job generally, but the, my point is, is when you call them when you really need them and you've got an issue, they're not there on these no. issues. And, we, and this is costing this town a huge amount of money. And it's not just... Bear in mind here, it's not just repair time, it's officer time yeah, as well. Yeah. We're spending a huge amount of time on this, doing it. So if we could just look at the whole picture holistically and come back with the facts and then make a decision. Yeah. Um, have we, so have we, have we approved and this spend has gone to repair already? We, if, I don't think it's been done yet, but if, if we want the toilets to be up and working, we've, we've got to do it, unfortunately. Yeah. So do we need to take it to a vote as to whether we keep them shut for the moment? And look I'd like to propose that we keep them shut yeah. Yeah. until we have yeah. a full report with all the facts from my yeah. on what, what they've taken in in finances in 20Ps, what they've cost us over the past four five years, yeah. and uh, what they've also cost us in, in opposite time yeah. dealing with the issues. And also, again, back to David's point, the issues we've had around cleaners, because obviously we're gonna, if the cleaners turn up, they're going to charge us. Even if they don't do anything, because if it's their safety, it's, it's paramount. So yeah. I propose that we we keep the toilets shut indefinitely until the report is issued, hopefully to full council on the thirteenth of March, is my proposal. Yeah, and then we for consideration. We, so we hold the repair. Yeah. For the moment, and um, and then go from there. Do we need a, a what happens to the business? Can we add to that the the along with the <clears throat> the revenue we get in from them and the costs? Can we add in how long? How many weeks, how many days they've been shut? Mm -hmm. Because we can assume that if we come up with some solution that allows us to keep them open, that that can be added to the revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we need a proposal right now? Yeah, I've got Ben proposed. Second one. Yeah. All in favor of course of action? I, I will abstain because I think that somehow or other we should keep them open. Yeah, okay. No, no to Janet. I don't, which I, I mean, I, I, I'm voting for this, yeah, but I, I absolutely agree. They should be, they should be, I don't think, I think, this, I think the provision is, is important. It's important. It, yeah. It's vital for some people. Uh, exactly, that's, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, item number 17, date of next meeting. Um, we've got that scheduled for Thursday, 28th of March, 7.30 as usual. I can't be here. Just no, can I? Um, and now item number 18, exclusion of the public and press. So no public left in the building with us. Uh, but no. I will not to we will do no, yeah, I'll just read the last sentence. Under Sorry. the public bodies admissions to meet admissions to meeting act nineteen sixty, members of the public and the press are required to leave the meeting at item nineteen due to the items being a confidential matter and contractual obligations. So the recommendation that councillors agree to exclude the public and press. So I can that. thank you. Second, and all in favour? All in favour. Thank you. Thank you. 